I'm driving, so you may not be able to see me. Is that okay? You, you're not speeding, are you? I always speed. <laughs> the seatbelt is on, though, right? <laughs> it sure is. It uh, sure is. All right. How do you say your name? Irina? Yes. Okay. Yes. And so you're trying to put this deal together basically here. Um, you said it was you was going to try to wholesale it, or are you trying to do a, a, a subject two with it, or what's the deal with this deal now? So when she first approached me, of course, I, the first thing I was thinking about is wholesaling is because that's what I normally do. But then I noticed that she, she still owed, you know, a good amount on the mortgage. So then I said, well, maybe I can try to sub to it. Um, and I, I reached out to someone who had contacted me about a different property that I had. Uh, that one didn't work out for them, but when I saw this, I said, well, maybe this works. So I called them yesterday. They said they have 40000 in cash that they can, you know, do a sub two deal if someone would hold a mortgage. So I was like, well, maybe this will work. So if I can sub to it and get the seller, you know, out of the property and, and not having to worry about paying the mortgage that she can no longer pay, then this might work. Yeah, it's possible. Um, the biggest thing when it comes to any type of these creative real estate deals and terms and all of that stuff, um, step one is we have to gather all the facts, like, you know, all this stuff you already had. Like you said, the ARV is about 197. They owed about 145. Is that right? And their um, monthly payment was 1670 including the principal interest taxes and insurance. Now, what is the condition of this house? Does it need any repairs or, or is it pretty good condition? Um, it may need light repairs. It is livable. Um, and, you know, I already advised the person who's interested that it may need some repairs, but they do those repairs, so they don't mind, but it is livable. Okay. So the biggest thing, like I said, is gathering the facts, which is all of that stuff I just named out on top of that. The question must be asked to the seller because the seller is the problem right now. Buyers are everywhere. Buyers are drooling over deals like this all over the place. So the thing is getting the seller on board by asking them a simple question. Would you consider taking a monthly payment until we pay you off in full? Uh, you know, I don't know how motivated she is or is it more about she needs money or is it more about she just want to stop making that monthly payment? What is her motivation for selling? Her husband passed away and she told me that she can no longer afford it on her own so um with her saying that and i think she's also um not well so with her saying that um it immediately made me think well maybe she just needs to move and have somebody take over the mortgage if she can't do it on her own oh so she's still living in this property right so yeah, that question must have to be asked to her. So all of our positioning in any of these deals is asking questions. We can't make up stuff. We can't assume, or I think she might. We have to ask her, would you be willing to take this monthly payment? Would you be okay if we took over the payments? You have to ask the question to the seller. If they're not on board, none of this means nothing. It's all dead. If they're on board, we got something going. If they're not for it, it's done. It's a done deal. Because some people get funny about that stuff. About, oh, I got to keep a loan on my name? What you mean? And you know, all this type of stuff. And some people just say, oh, I don't care. Yeah, whatever it takes. I don't want to do it anymore. And so they just give you the house, basically. And that's the best case scenario. But we don't know until we ask the right questions. Does that make sense? It does. And I'll definitely ask her that. She um, inboxed me from an uh, ad that I had on Facebook. So we didn't really speak yet. I just asked her to give me some info on the property. And she, she did that immediately yesterday. But we haven't had a chance to speak. I told her that I would get back to her today and so i want to come to her with both options so the options really are questions that's what i would say i wouldn't even offer any options yet i need to know you know more information like does she have the capability of moving is it is it going to be a hardship for her because that's where you're going to make your money yet you don't know what the money is yet because if this guy is going to put forty thousand down you could possibly put forty thousand right into your pocket we don't know because we don't work out a deal with the seller yet all this stuff has right. worked out with that seller if she just gave you the house and you pay the closing costs only, you could potentially put, you know, almost 40 grand in your pocket. Hit Pocket National Bank, my favorite place. <laughs> I hear that. 
So, but we yeah, don't know so. that until we ask those questions. And it's not about, you know, uh, you know, I know it's easy, you know, when you do wholesale and it's okay, yeah, we get the information, we look at the numbers and we make an offer. When you're doing these terms, you got to get the facts down and see, you know, what they're willing to do because we don't know. If she's willing to just give you the house and say, I don't care, I just don't want to make this payment. I already got a place to move. I don't need money to move to where I'm going. I just don't want to pay this because this, this happens from time to time. I've come across these type of people who just don't want the house. I don't care, whatever it takes. And I'm like, well, you're talking my talk now. But if she does care, that's another issue. So we don't know what she thinks or what her okay. feeling is about this. So we have to ask those questions of her, which is usually done on the phone. But I mean, you can ask over a text, but preferably I try to get them on the phone and see what their situation is so we can actually understand what's going on, how we can actually help them. Because, you know, as you know, wholesaling, money isn't always the problem all the time. And this deal, money may, may not be the problem. Problem may just be, I can't make that payment. That 1670 can be a lot of money. You know, right. but she might right. have some money to move herself, deal with her new life starting over and all that. But we don't know what she really requires to solve her problem. Once we identify that, that's when we can present her with the option of, well, we can take over this payment for you. Put, you know, five grand in your pocket. You can take, you know, whatever overage from that to put in your pocket. But we don't know what she needs. So we can't make her any offers till we really identify the real pain point. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's that's kind of, you know, where you're at at this point is I would be posing the questions to her to see what her situation is, how you can really help her before pitching cash offer or the terms offer. That's how I do it, you know, it, you know, because I don't even okay. know if it work for a wholesale deal, right? Because that's pretty tight, right? You said 197. Right. Which is why I was like, uh. Yeah, you can't even, you can't even wholesale it because the numbers won't work. <laughs> right. So, Right. Not a wholesale deal, but terms changes everything. And then that's the other thing. When you're a buyer, when you do find a buyer, if it's not this person or another person, what price are they buying it at? You know what I mean? So, so these terms get a little more complex. That's why I always tell people to get a little trained up on it because it's so much money and it. it'll blow you away. You'll be like, man, wholesale are nice, but terms deals change your life. It can make you rich, like for real, like literally in like a year. Right. I got nine houses. I just started real estate in, a year ago. You know, everybody can't do that, but, you know, and that's really slow. I've seen people do way more than that in one year's time, you know, so. Right. I, I started a year ago as well, and all I've been doing is wholesaling, but like I said, this opportunity presented itself, and I'm like, okay, this may be an opportunity for me to do my first sub two or some other type of term deal, and I've never done them, so. I reached out to Alicia, who I know has, you know, done a few. She was like, "No," she said, "I, you know, I know directly who to get you to." So, yeah. Yeah. So the positioning, like I said, generally just in any of these deals you come across, is figuring out what's the real numbers. You know, the same stuff we asked already: ARV, how much they owe, what's the monthly payment, what kind of repairs it needs, um, and also when you're trying to sell it, you know, you can sell it for a higher price than you get it from her. You can buy it for literally the 145 she owes on it and sell it to that other dude for 185, put the 40,000 in your pocket and he still owes you, you know, uh, he'll, t he'll take the 40 on the front end. You'll get a passive cash flow in the middle, depending on what monthly payment you set him up on. And you get a check on the back end if he ever cashes it out. So it's so it's three profit centers in these terms deals. It just changes everything. It's not just one check on the front end. You can get that check on the front end, the cash flow and the back end money if they cash it out. That's just, you know, that changes everything. That makes a $100,000 spread out of a deal you're going to throw away. You know what I mean? That most wholesalers right. run away from. So that's why I say it's right. important to get trained up on this stuff because you leave a lot of money on the table when you don't know, you know, what's going on with it. Right. How did you learn it? I just, I, I took the time to learn it. I said, I'm going to go learn how to do this. I ain't leaving. You spend a lot of money on marketing. You know what I'm saying? We, we spend all this money and deals and time and energy and effort to find motivated sellers. Then they come to us and we can't help them. So I want to be able to help them when they come to me. Bring me a house. Somebody want to sell. I got about 15 ways to buy it. Which way you want to sell it to me? So I give them the option from that point. Whether it's a sandwich lease option, whether it's a, a, a wraparound mortgage, whether it's a subject to, whether it's any of these creative type deals, just a straight up seller finance deal. I got a house from a guy that was a straight up finance seller finance deal. No money down, 0% interest on a 10 year balloon. That's crazy. Wow. Wow. You know what I mean? And, 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 and if you don't ask those questions, you don't know what a person will be willing to do. Right. We don't know. 
we can't make up stuff. I say, well, I assume that they would do. Well, I think they'll do. I don't know nothing. When I go into any of these deals, my position is I don't know nothing. I know to ask questions, let them tell me what their situation is, and then we can formulate a solution to their problem. Okay. So, I mean, depending on what this. All right, uh, so bad. So I said for, for this particular deal, it's more about, you know, what is this seller willing to do? And the only way to know that is to ask those questions. You know, or would they is they uh would they be okay with you just taking over the mortgage, taking over that monthly payment for them? You know, and there's a couple of ways I usually position this stuff too. So I mean, like I said, it's, it's really some training to go into working these It's not that hard. It just takes time to learn it. You know what I mean? Right. I learned it in about two weeks. So I mean, any person that's dedicated to say, I want to know what the heck is going on, why I'm missing all this money and missing all these properties. And it ain't even just about the money, it's about you get to actually own the property. You know what I mean? That's the power of it home ownership with no money down. That's crazy to me, you know, and people don't even know you can do that. <laughs> right. That, that, that's a fact. Um, okay. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to reach out to her cause I just got a text and my closing got pushed back to Monday. I hate everyone, but whatever. Um, <laughs> I'm going, <laughs> I swear, I, I, where people is, is, I'm is, closing is, one on Wednesday, so I feel your pain. I was supposed to close one today too, but it's been pushed to Wednesday, so I, I, I understand. <laughs> this business is so finicky, but um, okay. So now that I have the time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach out to her. I'm going to ask the question, and then um, if you have time, we can either jump back on, or if not, then we can I guess do it later on today. But I'm going to ask the question. Uh, so that, you know, we'll know where she is and then what kind of offer I can put together for her. So I'm going to do that ASAP. Right. So, and then also, you know, what is the monthly payment? So this person that this buyer you say you have that want to put 40000 down, is he what is he willing to pay monthly? Because see, that's your cash flow money right there. We don't know what that number is. What is the market willing to pay for it monthly? Is this a $2,000 a month rent on a regular basis? Or, you know, we got to know what those numbers are because the numbers are what's going to make everything change. Is it okay. a deal or not a deal? You know, we don't know that yet. Because okay. that right, buyer, so with him putting 40000 down, what is he talking about paying a month? We don't know that yet. Well, unless he said, did they say what they would do? They didn't say what they can pay a month, but they did say that um, they wanted like a 12 or 24 month because they said they usually get lump sum lump sums of money that they can go ahead and pay because they um, sell properties too. So they have properties that they sell and they, you know, get income from other properties. Like they have a property right now that um, I'm going to sell for them. And so they're like, you know, we usually get committed and within 24 months we can go ahead and pay it off. And they didn't say what amount per month they can pay. Right. And so that's, and then that's the other thing too. Like I said, once you gather all, gather all the information from that seller, then you have to do a little bit of market research to see what is the rental rate in that area. We don't know. Say if the rental rate is twelve hundred and she got to pay sixteen seventy, who covering that, that difference? I don't know that though. You know what I'm saying? I'm just asking that as a question because I don't know what's going on in that particular market. Now, if that's a twenty five hundred dollar a month place and you only got a payment going out of sixteen seventy, you get all that extra money coming into your pocket. We don't know that though. See, it makes a difference. the 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 price the price isn't really going to kill you on it. That's usually the least amount of thing, the term. How much down, how much per month, and for how long? You know, how long is already in the loan because we already know she got a mortgage. You know, how much per month is already in the mortgage? Is she willing to take that? It's just you taking over her payments. You know, all of that stuff is all the factor, and they got to be worked out or asked about on the seller side before you ever even think about a buyer. Because when you come across these deals, the demand is 100 times bigger than the supply. Somebody might give you 50000 down for this house. I don't know that. You see what I'm saying? Right. These these deals get really creative. And every one of them that I've done, I beat the rental rate in the market. I beat the price in the market, everything. And I get a down payment on the front end. So it's like a win, win, win all the way around on these deals, especially when they don't need much work. The only problem you run into with these deals is if they need a lot of work. Right. Okay. So you so, just sell it that's cooperative and it looks like you can probably make something happen. Okay. So what I'll do is, um, again, I'll reach out to her today when I get off the phone with you. I'll have the conversation. Um, should I also reach out to the sellers to ask them about, you know, what they can pay per month, all of those questions that you asked me? Oh, you're talking about the buyer? 
Um, I wouldn't necessarily worry about the buyer at the moment. I would see what the seller can do first because it's just like a wholesale deal. You're trying to work out a great deal over here with the seller and you're going to take that great deal and make it a good deal for your buyer and you'll just eat in the middle. That's all. Okay. All right. So I will take care of that within the next hour, hour and a half. And then um, I'll let you know, you know, what it, what it is that she's saying and then we can get together again and kind of work out something for her if we can. Okay, because that's, I mean, that's the biggest thing. What is she requiring to move on? That's really the biggest thing. What can you do to make her life easier? Is it going to be... Can I, put you on, can I put you on hold for one second? Yeah, sure. Take your time. Thank you. Yeah, sorry about that. Welcome back. So, yeah, that's what I would say. That, that, and that's, you know... I guess that should be the right direction. See what you can do to help her out. Okay. And whenever other you're that, free, did you have any other questions or anything for me? Um, not right now. Not right now. I'm pretty sure I'll have some later when we talk again because I'm a questions person. Um, so as soon as I speak to her, I will get back with you and see how we can make this work, and then I'll have all of my questions. I'm sure. Right. So that, that's the biggest thing. Like I say, with any of these deals, that's what you should be is a question person. What question can I ask this seller to try to figure out what's going on and how I can help them? That's really our, the biggest thing. Okay. All right. That'll work. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All, All right. right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.